Hi everyone, welcome to AIP Partsala. I am Anup Jha, and uh, today we are going to study about the for about the for loop and the control statements. In the control statements, we will be uh, studying about the break break and continue. So in the last class, we have already discussed about the for loop, but in this class, we will be discussing something new and we'll be practicing some more code. Uh, in relation to the for statements. So first of all, I am sharing you my screen. So let me share you my screen, and uh, and then then okay. So there is one DAO of Ruchi. She has uh, pinged me with his code, her code, and she is asking what is wrong in this code. So let me explain you what is wrong in this code. So first thing that I can see here is that in the if in the if the if statement that you are uh, put here, if I should be in small, so you should put I in small. Second thing that is there is the issue of indentation. So you should write an indentation in a proper way. So now it is indent is correct. Here in the print statement, P is capital. So first of all, you should keep P in small. Then the indentation issue. So I have corrected it. Here in else also, there is an indentation issue. Else should be indentation with the if. So now it is correct. Here P should be in small, and uh, also the indentation wise. Now it is uh, correct indentation. If you run this code, uh, no, this is getting print. Okay, this this should be. Uh, now if you run this code, you will get the. Have you understood, Richie? What wrong you are doing in this code? Yes. So, any other doubt that you people have? No. Fine. So, let's move to something else. So, I'm giving you a very simple problem first, and I will give you some time to uh, try it out. Thereafter, I will explain you. So, what is that uh, problem? Let me write it. So, you have to find the product of all numbers present in a list. And what is that list? List is LST is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So your time starts now. Now you should try and thereafter, I'm giving you a few minutes to try it out and then I will explain. Your time up. Now let me, if any of any one of you have uh, written the code, you can ping me in chat. Otherwise, I'm going to explain you. How this piece of code is called. So let me write a code for you. So first I am writing LST is equal to this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now I am defining one variable with the name product. Product is equal to first I am initializing this variable with the value 1 for for i in lst product that is equal to product into i
and printing print No, I'm going to need this. Okay. I got the product. Product is this. Have you understand, understood this piece of code? Or shall I explain you? Here, LST has a value 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I first initialized a variable product with a value 1. Now, I'm looping through this list. For i in LST, so first I will take the value 10. Product is equal to product into i. So initially the value of product is 1. Initially the value of product is 1. And in the during the first iteration, what is the value of i? 10. So 1 into 10 is the value of product during the first iteration. So now during the first iteration, what will be the value of the product after first iteration? The value of product is 10. Now, during the second iteration, what is happening? I will take the value 20. And this product is equal to product into i. That is 10 into 20. This becomes, let's say, 200. During the third iteration, what will happen? I will have take the value. 30, this value, and again it will come, and it will, uh, product is equal to product into i, that means 200 into 30. This way, it will keep on repeating till it completes the entire list. Uh, finally, we get the product, and here we are simply printing. You understand this? Yeah, I'm getting product 10, product 200, product 600, something like that. Be because because you are doing indentation uh, error in your code. So kindly check your indentation. You must be, you should, you should not, pre you should keep your indentation of this print statement uh, with for loop, correct? The indent indentation of this for loop and this print should be same. That's why you are you. If you put this print here, you will get that kind of uh, output that you are getting now. So you should try this. You will get your output. Okay. Yeah, correct. Correct. Fine. Correct. Now let's move to the second problem that I am giving you. Now what you have to do. Uh, so, first thing, I am explaining you first one more concept for, we have, last time we have studied about the for else, uh, if else, thereafter we have studied about while else. Here, we will be studying your for else. So I'm giving you one example to uh, with a code to show you how the uh, for else is working. See, I'm taking one variable number and I'm assigning two variables, uh, one, 
Two. Three. Four. I jump. Three. Number. Print. Item. See how this is working for else it is exactly working same as while else was working. I have last in the last class I have explained you the difference or if else if elif else what is difference in the working principle of if else if elif else and while else correct same same for else is working here likewise the while else was working same for else was working here here what is happening first uh, first this the what is there inside this for loop will get executed so I have defined one variable number and inside this variable one, two, three is the item that I have assigned in it. So, um, so it is printing this item here one by one, one, two, and three. After this uh, entire execution will get completed, it will come to the else, else block and it is printing what is written inside this else block. So this and this both are getting executed. First, this for loop is getting executed completely. Thereafter, this else will get executed. So after this else is getting executed, no item left in this. No item left in this. So you have to keep this in your mind. This is how for and else is working. In spite of this, if there would be if here and else here, What's, what should be the working principle here? Either this will execute or this will execute. Both will not execute. If else, if L if and else would be there, if here, it means either this will execute or this will execute or this. Or if both of these will not execute, this will execute by default. This will execute. But all the three will not execute at the same time. But here in for else, both will execute. This will also execute and else part will also. That I would like to show. So let's move further. Let's take some other example. So, I am giving you one example, one question to practice first. So before giving question, let, let me give you some other things. Too. Okay. Let's take this question. Roots underscore list. There is a list of roots here. What are those lists? Mango. Mango. They are after cherry. Cherry. They are after apple. Apple. They are after papaya. Yeah. And after top I then so this is the list root list I have given you. Now what you have to do, you have to print first. You have to print this mango. 
then you have to print this m a n g and o thereafter you have to print cherry and see the r y cherry and then you have to print c h t e, r r y likewise you have to do for apple papaya and banana so first you have to print this mango thereafter in the mango you have to print each letter of the mango in a separate line then you have to print cherry then each letter in the cherry in a separate line and so on till banana so this is your uh, this is your uh, questions so let's give it a try thereafter i will explain you. your time starts so your time is up those of you who are watching this video on this record in, as a recorded session on youtube or somewhere else so what you can do you can pause the video and you can take your time maybe 5 minutes 6 minutes 7 minutes time you can take and give it a try thereafter you can resume the video and uh, see the solutions don't just jump into the solution uh, directly because it will not help you build your own logic or uh, logical thinking that you should you must build to solve any such kind of problem so why i am giving you time to practice it uh, and something like because so that if you can think in this direction then slowly and progressively you can build your logic in logic so if you can build your logic then you can solve any problem what's way so now let's see how this is working how we can uh, uh, like uh, write this piece of code let's see I am writing for i in first of all let me run this code then I am writing for i in fruits underscore list print i. thereafter for j in i in j and now i'm running this it is in the four line of code i'm getting the output that i have asked you to write so how this is working would you guys like explanation mr shankar would you like to have explanation of this uh, or um, this solution yeah for i in fruit underscore list print i so I it is printing the get see. something else you must be doing some indentation error because uh, That's why you. I'm getting uh, also cherry, pop apple, papaya, banana. Then. Fruit. What? What you are getting? You can ping me your code in my chat. Chat. So whatever. You can ping me. The code I've tried myself. Na, in that I'm getting this. Okay, okay. So you can you can uh, ping me your code in my chat box so that I can explain you what are the wrong things that you are doing in your code so that you will understand. so let's first understand my piece my code then and in the meanwhile you can ping me your code in my chat i will explain you what are what what is the wrong thing that you are doing there that's why you are not getting the correct output correct 
so let's understand it. Here we we are using for loop inside for loop. This is called nested for loop. This is called nested nested for loop. Why nested for loop? Because for loop is used inside the inside of for loop. So during the first iteration, what is happening for i in root underscore list? So this is index zero. This is index one. This is index two. This is index three. This is index two. So first during the first iteration, what i is taking the value mango, and it is printing this value. Print i. What is the value of i? Mango. It has already it has printed the value of mango. Now after that, I am using I am starting another loop for j in i. This loop should is is it. This is mango m a n g o. Now the second loop will iterate over this string mango. So this one two. Zero, one, two, three, four. So now this J will first take M, and it will print J for J in I. Value of I is mango, and for J in I means J is taking the uh, J is taking the first index of I. What is the uh, first index of I? M, and it is printing J. So I am getting M here. During the second iteration. I am getting uh, j is equal to one. What is the value? A. So I am getting A here. Likewise, n g o. So when this will complete, then the control will come back to here. During the first iteration of uh, this loop, the value of i was mango. First index value. Now during the second iteration. The value of i is equal to what cherry. So I am getting cherry here. So I am getting cherry here. And now. For J in I, what is the value of I? Now the value of I term change. C H E double R. During the second for loop, what is happening? J in I means first it is taking the value C, then H, then E, then R, then R and Y. It is printed here, and in the same way it is printing till uh, the list. Get exhausted. Why we have chosen J only? Hmm? Why we have chosen J only? Why not any you other can, letter? You can take any. Okay. Let's any other. Let's 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 write your name here. R U C H I D T and print it. It is just a variable, so you can write anything. It doesn't matter. And let's run it. But still, we are getting this enough. Are you getting? Yeah. Are you getting that? Because it's I a variable. Indicate... You can. Yes, yes, yes. I indicate the first list. Ah, item you can I you. Yes, 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 yes. And then Ruchi indicate the first uh, index number letter. Number of mango. What? Mango. Word mango. Okay. So you can take in spite of I, you can take anything here. It's not necessary that you should take I. I'm taking. Uh, okay. Let's write B H A G N. Bhagwan, and I'm printing this. Bhagwan. Bhagwan. Okay. And let's run it. B H A. A G okay B H A G W okay W 
similar let's run it so i am getting the same because variable name you can take anything but usually what we do we take the name of the variable so that it is easily understood whatever the code that i am writing if we take the variable as per the name of what is uh, the code that we are typing so that it is easily understood by the other programmers or by us you can say so that's why i am writing here i or j you can write it anything whatever you know. it doesn't impact your own mr sankar do you get this i am getting error so you must be doing some indentation uh, problem you can ping me your code in my chat box i can check it and then i can revert to you so see uh, ruchi has ping me one code so let me check this piece of code and uh, revert her the wrong practice that you are doing yes So I just try. I think I... this this piece of code is correct, Ruchi. I don't see anything wrong in this code. But I am not getting the same outcome. I am getting mango, cherry, apple, banana, papaya, and then something. I am getting fruit dash list. There must be something wrong. I'm. See, fruits underscore list. Fruits underscore list. You check yeah. what are the things that you have assigned your fruit underscore. That will uh, give you the value accordingly. It will give you the value accordingly. The same that that is given to us: mango, cherry, apple, papaya, banana. Have you have you placed this in this order? So, what are the output that you are getting? You are asking. Mango, cherry, apple, papaya, banana, and then fruit underscore list in a single letter manner. I don't know why. What's wrong? Okay. Let me take this one. Yeah, that's the same. Mango, cherry, apple, papaya, banana. Correct. For item in fruit underscore list. Oh, so you you are doing an indentation here. Are you able to see this screen, my screen? No. No. See, you are doing indentation here. You are putting the for loop for both the for in uh, at the same indentation level. That's why you are getting this error. So what I should to do? Whatever. What correction? I must make it. See what you are doing. You are putting this for. Okay. If I run this code, what is it? You are getting this thing, na? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. So why you are getting this? Because you are putting this for at the same indentation level. Okay. You have to put this for inside this for. You have to put for inside this for. Okay. If I, that's why you are getting the that error. But you are not getting error. You are getting different output because I'm getting different. Ah, uh, now I got. Got it, na? This is the yeah. thing that you are uh, you are doing wrong. Let me see. Mr. Sankar Code has for item in this. Let me explain this. Open that. C. So. Uh, tell me, Mr. Sankar. Yeah. Root underscore list. Fine. So this I in root underscore list. It's fine. And this print I. Correct. 
This is also a pointer. Then for J in item, where this item comes from? What is this? From where this is coming? You have to write here for J in I. Then when you run this code, it means it is C. Okay, okay. You guys want to get it? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So let's move ahead and uh, let me give you one more code. And uh, this is like uh, you have to. Print a prime number from fifty to hundred. So let's give it a try, and uh, whatever whatever code you will get, don't worry. Uh, you have to uh, ping me, and those of you who are uh, seeing the recording of uh, this video, this online class, you just pause the video. Give it a try, and then you can resume the video and see the solutions. Time up, guys. So you can ping me your code on my chat window, and I'm going to explain this piece of code. You have to write along with me. When I am typing here, you should also type at the same time. Thereafter. I will explain you from the first line to the last line, the entire code. So I am taking first. I am taking one variable num one is equal to, and I am taking another variable num two is equal to. Yes. Now, for num in range num one. Comma num two plus one plus one. Um, yes. If num one is uh, if num is greater than let's say one. Now I am taking one. Other variable, another variable is divisible is equal to false. For I in range two point. Now, Here I am getting all the prime number 
form 50, 800. So now let me explain this piece. How does it See, I have to find the prime number starting from 50 till 100. That means 100 is also including in this and 50 is also including in this. Okay. So now I am using a first, I am using a for loop for num in range num1, comma num2 plus 1. Num2 plus 1 will give me 101. That means now my upper limit is 101 and my lower limit is 50. You, you know from the previous that run range function will give you this thing, upper and the lower. But the upper upper limit is not included in it. But I want 100 to be included. That's why I'm adding plus 1 in it. So that now my upper will limit should become 101 and 100 will be included in it. That's why I am using this. So, so it is going from 50 till 100, including 50 and 100. Now I am checking if num, what is num? First initially during the first iteration, what is the value of num? Value of num is 50 here in this case. So I am checking if num is greater than one. Yes. I am what I am getting? Yes. True. This is coming out to be true because num is greater than one. If it is greater than one, I am defining one variable is divisible is equal to false. What is the value of this variable? Is divisible false. It is from my end, I am defining this that this is false. Now When you find that number is, what is prime number? Can you please uh, tell me any one of you, what is prime number? Ruchi, Mr. Misra, can you please uh, explain me what is prime number? Uh, prime number is like three, five, seven. It's not divisible by two. No, no. This is not divisible by two is not a prime number. Ruchi, you? A number which is not divisible by any other number except itself. Yes. Or one. One. Number which is not divisible, which is only divisible by one and the number itself. Number itself is a prime number. That means a prime number has only two factors. One and the number itself. Other than that, prime number should not have two factors. The number, uh, Mr. Misra, that you, what you were saying, that is... Uh, called odd number. Number which is not divisible by t is an odd number and number which is divisible by 2 is an even number. So I have to see here in between 50 and 100, including 50 and 100, what are the prime numbers? So what is the criteria to be a prime number? The number should not have any factors other than one and the number itself because one and the number itself is a default factor of any number. So I am not considering these two. I am considering apart from this one and the number itself. Is there any factor? If there is any factor, that means number is not a prime number. If number has doesn't have any factor, then it means number is a prime number. Correct? Are you getting the clarity? Yes. 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 Now let's see. During the first iteration, what I am doing here, during the first iteration, uh, let me take this vanishing um, thing. So, uh, during the first iteration, what I am doing, num, uh, I, have I have to go from range num1 to here it is 50 and here it is 101. Okay. Here it is 50, num 1 is 50, and it is 101. Correct? Now, see. 
if num is greater than one, what is the value of num during the first iteration? 50 and 50 is greater than one. So I am putting this uh, variable false. Is divisible is equal to false. Now, for i in range, now I am starting another for loop. For i in range, two comma num, two comma num, two comma num. What is the value of num? Fifty. First value is fifty. Two comma num. So I now I am checking if there is any factor of fifty in between two, in between two and fifty. I am checking if num divided by i, I will go from two till forty nine. Okay, I will go from value of i here will go from two till forty nine. Fifty will not be included. So I'm checking if i in range two comma fifty, if num this value num divided by i this fifty divided by i i first the value of i is two, then the value of i in the second iteration will be three, then four, then five, so on till forty nine. If any of one of this value will give me zero, that means this number fifty has of number which is divisible, which uh, this number has a factor which is not number and one itself. Apart from one and the number itself, it has some other factor also. If the number has some other factor, that means it is not a prime. If that is the case, if that is the case, then I am redefining this variable is divisible is equal to true. That means yes. This is divisible by right? this is divisible. I'm saying this is divisible. Okay. If, if it is divisible, then then this is not a prime number. And apart from this, after this for loop we get there, this loop if is divisible is equal to false. If let's say I am getting this value, if is divisible is equal to false, print num. That means if the number is actually not divisible by, if I am not getting is divisible is equal to true, that means it is false. In that case, I have to print this. I, so it will print all the number which is actually a prime number. Do you guys able to understand this? Or shall I explain you once more? So let me clear it first. Uh, why we are taking this? Yes, yes. Uh, I got it the last one, but I didn't get this first. What you haven't get? This the first half. The first half is divisible is equal to false. The first one, if num is greater than one, is divisible is okay. equal to false. Why we put it false here? Why not true? Okay. Um, See, this is something we are putting from our end because we have to check whether my number is divisible by has any factor other than one and the number itself or not. So first of all, what I am doing, I am putting this variable is divisible is equal to false. That I am assuming the number is not divisible by anything. But of this variable, I am putting the the value of this variable is divisible is equal to false. Is divisible is equal to false means this I'm assuming this variable is not divisible by uh, has doesn't have any other factor. Now I'm checking. After that, first I'm assuming is divisible is equal to false. And I'm now I'm checking. Is it is this number has any factor? other than the number and uh, one and the number itself, how? Let's say first my number is 50. In uh, how will you check the factor of 50? First you will one, you will uh, just let it go one. You will, you will first check is two divisible. 
is uh, is 50 divided by 2 you will check like this then you will check is 3 div uh, divided by is 50 divided by 3 then you will check 4 then you will check 5 6 till 14 if from 2 till 49 if 50 will be divided by any one of this number that means 50 is not a prime number is not prime not prime let's take an example of 53 if you check 53 so you have to check 2 3 4 5 6 7 till 49 when you are checking 50 in the first number 2 you get yes 2 is divided by yes 50 is divided by 2 that means it has a factor other than 1 and the number itself so 50 is not a prime number but let's take another number first it will check 50 then it will check 51 then it will check for 52 then it will check for 53 so let's take 53 when you take 53 and when you keep on checking from 2 till 49 you will see that there is no no factor there is no number between 2 and 49 including 2 and 49 which divides 50, 53 that means 53 is a prime number is a prime number same thing i am writing the same logic in the in my program what i am writing first i am defining if num is greater than 1 yes it is greater than 1 because it is 50 then i am de uh, defining one variable is divisible is equal to false first i am putting this false then i am checking for i in range 2 comma num 2 comma num means i am checking from 2 till the number is there is any any number that is divided by and, and I'm putting another uh, if statement here, if num divided by i, num divided by i, this i, is equal to 0, then this is equal to 0, then the reminder will be 0, when the number will be completely divided by uh, number, then it will be div uh, 0. So, if divisible is equal to true. Uh, give me a second, guys. Give me a sec. I'm coming just... Because someone is at the door, I am popping. So then it is checking is equal to zero if this comes out to be zero, if any if num divided by i from uh, 2 to till 49, if any one of the number divides 50 completely, then I will get a reminder of 0. If I get the remainder 0, what, what does that mean? That means the number is divisible by uh, some number apart from 1 and the number itself. So I am putting this condition is divisible is equal to true here. Fine, because is divisible is equal to true. Now, after the for loop, I am putting one condition if. Let's say if is divisible is equal to false. If is divisible is equal to true, then it's fine. Otherwise, if if is divisible is equal to false, print now. So what it means, if let's say when this is divisible is equal to true. Is divisible is equal to true only when the number from two till uh, uh, till uh, fifty is di is divided. Uh, any number from two to fifty will divide it completely, and I am getting the remainder zero. So if this condition is not fulfilling, then if this condition fulfills, then is divisible is equal to true. And if this condition does not fulfill, then already we have is divisible is equal to false. We already have. I have defined it earlier. Assign the value false. And if this is false, 
that means the number that number is a prime number so in the condition where is divisible is equal to false whatsoever be the number which is fulfilling the criteria is divisible is equal to false i am putting i am printing that number so these are the numbers which are fulfilling my criteria and i i am getting this numbers as a prime number now is it understandable by you or not yes yes see yes. this is something a little bit typical thing i can understand it because when i had studied it and i i uh, when i get this same piece of code i was also like uh, get it's uh, something a little bit complex so let's do one thing i have explained you in a very beautiful way so uh, let's after the session ends uh, when the video get uploaded you can see the speed of uh, you can try this piece of code by yourself try to understand by yourself watch the video again and if again you will face the issue in understanding i will explain you second time in the next session but before that what you have to do you have to watch this session again correct so that okay if the things will get repeated again and again something we will miss lot of things uh, during the first uh, like uh, time when we did when you uh, do it for the second time definitely you will going to understand and uh, if you will not understand i am here to help you out maybe we will can discuss uh, second time also so mr misra is it okay for you yeah but uh, okay i got it uh, why so indication is not there uh, after each divisible in the line 10 why why indentation is not there column is, is not yes, there in line, yes line indentation nine. is there if is divisible is equal to false then print num indentation no, no, is there before, before that 99 9 is divisible because we are not putting is divisible is just a variable Mm. is is divisible is just a variable we are not uh, defining any condition here that's why we do not need to put an indentation here here we are defining it with if if condition is there here also see if condition is there that's why we are putting uh, this colon here for condition is there that's why we are putting it like a colon here also see is divisible is equal to false it's just a variable here if condition is there that's why we are putting a colon here for is there so see here for loop is there inside this for loop if is there inside this if for loop is there inside that for loop if is there so and you are seeing this uh, this this code this complex piece of code for the first time so it's natural that you will face the difficulty initially but uh, but believe me when you will see it for the second time or third time definitely we will able to grasp all this otherwise i am here to explain you there is not an issue so i uh, request you to i request you to uh, uh, watch this video for the second time completely and and then then definitely your understanding will get improved when you watch it for the second time Do you guys agree with me? Shall I move ahead? Yes. Okay. So I will explain you very simple thing here. So I will not take much time. So I have to wrap up this session within five minutes. So let's see. So just like what, just like we are printing in the. Uh, list we have already studied about the tuple do you guys remember what is tuple can you explain me what is tuple what what is do you guys uh, explain me what is tuple 
I explained you in the earlier simple. Similar to as uh, list, but it in list we use square brackets. In tuple we use curly brackets. Yes. Yes. Parenthesis we use actually we use parenthesis. Uh, immutable data it can't be mutated. Ah, correct. Is, uh, you remember it. You remember it. So see what I am trying to explain you. This is let's say tuple. I have defined one tuple, one, two, three, four, and five. So just like we are iterating, we can also use for loop in tuple for t in two print t print and just run this one. We get here also we will get first one, then two, then three, and four, then five. This is very simple. You understand this? Now take one more thing. I am defining one list five is equal to. This list has uh, two comma four six comma eight six comma eight then ten comma twelve and comma yeah. let me run this. See here it is a list. But this list is a collection of tuple. Do you, do you get this? This list is a collection of tuple. Here, two comma four is a tuple. Here, six comma eight is a tuple. Ten comma twelve is a tuple, and it is a list. So this list is a collection of tuple. And now I am iterating through this list. I want to iterate through this for uh, tube in list 5 print q if i run this i will get this 2 comma 4 6 comma 8 because let me explain you uh, do why it is getting here what's happening this is my first index zero. This is my second index, and this is my third index. Because this is one piece. This is one. This is another. This is another. It is. It comes in a uh, parenthesis. This is one triple. This is another triple. This is another triple. This is. Should be three. So that's it should be two. No? Where you have written what? three, it should be okay. Two. Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I have written it by mistake, so pardon me. Two zero one. You get this? Yes, yes. Now, there's one more thing here. Let me explain you that if I write for T1, comma, T2 in list 5 and then I print T1. Here instead of Q, I am writing two variables T1 comma T2 in list 5. So here automatically what is happening? The value of this first tuple T1 get assigned 2 and T2 get assigned 4. Similarly, during the second uh, iteration, T1 get assigned 6 and Q2 get assigned 8. You guys getting this? 
Yes, yes, dear lady. Yes. But here I am printing only T1. Here I am printing only T1. That's why I am getting only two. This it's two. just like x axis this. and y axis when we write the location. Uh, so ah, you I cannot say that x axis and y axis, but uh, yes, Some here you can say it's like uh, not uh, exactly not like that, but yes, uh, for understanding, you can remember it, it's a good way. Uh, but uh, here we are what if because we are if I say uh, here t1 is taking the T1 is taking this value and T2 is taking this value. So, during a second, T1 is taking this value and this T2 is taking this value. Similarly, again, T1 is taking this value and I am printing only T1. That's why I am getting only 2, 6, 2, 6, and 10. Correct? If let's say, if let's say, I will write it like this, this, the, let me give only T2. So in that case, what I will get? I will get 4, 8 and 4. Fine. So this is called tuple unpacking. So I think we have to stop here because uh now it's time so uh today we are not able to cover break and continue statements so i think i will cover it tomorrow and uh, in the meanwhile you should practice it and watch the video again so that you will be able to understand it in a more uh, clear manner in whatever problem you will face uh, please uh, ping me i am available for you always and uh, so let's uh, happy Independence Day to all of you. What is called? Yes. The Tupel. term that you use for T one and T two, what it is? Tupel under score. Tupel unpacking. Tupel unpacking. Tupel unpacking. This is the packed value I am unpacking here, separating the two. So that's why it is called Tupel unpacking. Tuple, tuple, and packing. So, thanks for coming and joining this session and making this session a wonderful session because when you guys interact and ask questions, so uh, it gives me a lot of pleasure to answer you and I will keep on answering. And we are on a very long journey because we have just started uh, in Python. So uh, I have to uh, cover uh, statistics, advanced mathematics, machine learning, deep learning, lot big data, and lot of lot lot of AI ops and lot of things is going to come. So just keep listening, keep smiling, keep coding, and uh, happy Independence Day! Thank you, thank you all for coming. And Anuja signing off. Thank you, thank you. मैंने स्टॉप कर दिया आप वीडियो स्टॉप मैं अच्छा कोई और कुछ हाँ जी मामा जी रिकॉर्डिंग शो मामा जी हाँ जी अच्छा रिकॉर्डिंग शो है